hey, guess what? It's Christmas time in September. You know what? I got this box in the mail yesterday. Let's crack it open and see what's inside. All right, let's see what's in here. Oh, oh, look at this. Wow, how about that? Look at that. That is a new Matthews Z7. And we got a little bit of uh, prep to do, so we're going to go to the bow shop and we're going to get this thing set up so I can climb a tree stand and get me some venison in the freezer because I'm about out. Morning, Tim. Merry Christmas. Santa Claus visits ah, you. How you doing, Scott? He brought you the good stuff. I'm telling you what, this is a bare bow. Sure. There's nothing on it. I want to talk to you today about sights. Okay. I want to talk to you about arrows. I want to talk to you about broadheads. And I want to get over here and shoot. Uh, basically, I want to crank down a few pounds. I've been shooting a little over 70 pounds. I want to get back back things off a little bit so it's sure. more comfortable and, and with today's bows you can do that. Obviously I've already been fitted for the bow but uh, any piece of equipment that I can take and properly fit to where they're fitting the body no matter the circumstance if they're fitting the shooter the way it needs to be they're going to be accurate and again I can't harp on it enough but but that shot placement is what we're after. Absolutely now the first thing you got to think about is if you buy a bow is draw length. What is draw length? Draw length is when an individual draws the bow back, I want a person, can't quite see my feet there, but almost like they're standing at attention. Mm -hmm. I want them to point at something, turn around and look at where they're pointing, have that hand behind their jaw, and they're just simply, they're pointing, they're shooting, they're pointing. I don't want a guy the way old school, the way we were taught of slung way back, mm -hmm. and I don't want somebody smashed into it either. But I want them forward, I want like a 60-40 split to where they're in here, to where they're just again pointing and looking, that's half the battle right there. When I can get a person to that point, then I can run. And so I the can draw put this length is from where they're holding the bow to relax. Boom, mm -hmm. just like that. I want your elbow to bend flat to the floor. This is what I want right there, flat to the floor. Okay. And I also want something else that's changed a little bit where we used to hold a high wrist. I want this in here like this. These fingers are just gonna melt that bow is just going to cradle the right pressure in there. Of the bow I can flip against. you over backwards, and I'm not going to do any damage here. Gotcha. With this bow today, with the 27-inch draw length, what do you think I can get speed-wise out of that? Boy, now, I've got to put some weight on the string. Now let's not forget that I got to put uh, this on, and maybe maybe a couple. We're going to be probably you got to remember about the IBO, the speeds that they tout on these bows when you pick the tag up and go ooh. Yeah. Those are at 70 pounds at 30 inches of draw length. That power stroke has got a lot to do with the speed. Gotcha. Uh, and also that's five grains of arrow weight per pound of bow draw weight. So what that means is that ain't the arrow we're gonna use. Exactly. In a hunting situation, I want a little bit more kinetic energy. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want, you couldn't care about you hitting me with a ping pong ball as fast as you can throw it. I don't want you to drop a hammer on my toe. <laughs> that, that, that hammer is going to carry a lot more energy. So we're going to put you in a little heavier arrow mm -hmm. than what that IBO rating is. So between draw length and, and the weight of the arrow, we're going to be dropping back a little bit. We're still going to finish faster mm -hmm. than what we would have with an older bow that would have been shooting in the 290s IBO. We're probably going to be mid-270s, 260s. Wow. Let's get this bow set up. I can't wait to Let's shoot. Let's go play. All right. All right. There are a lot of quivers out there. Um, one thing that I would suggest, if you look at this quiver, the very top of it, you'll see how it's scored out there where the broadheads can actually be pushed up into it. Mm -hmm. A lot of the good quivers, but, but just a little, you know, some of the cheaper ones just have a solid foam piece then they expect you to push that broadhead up in there in order to hold it. That's kind of old school thinking. Gotcha. With the introduction of a lot of these really cool mechanical broadheads, the problem is you shove them up in that foam, they're going to deploy. Yeah. When you've got either a cutout piece or you have two pieces of foam that's holding the arrow, 
it'll allow that arrow to sit up in here and not deploy it. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about arrows and let's talk about what you would recommend. Okay. Now I like carbon. You like carbon? I like carbon. You know, that's Tell something us that's, why. You just can't you can't buck the durability. And an arrow that, that Easton uh, kind of redesigned uh, a few years ago, um, they basically sat down and said, all right, with all the technology that we have, we've always kind of made target arrows work for hunting purposes. Let's sit down with a group of hunters and let's build a hunting arrow. And the arrow they came up with is an arrow called the Easton Axis. This particular arrow is a little smaller in diameter. Uh, that helps with windage. Mm -hmm. uh, it helps with penetration in the animal. But the biggest thing for carbon arrows is just the durability. I can stand here and talk to you till my thumbs turn purple. And I can pull that out and we can go hunting with it. Mm -hmm. um, we have several guys here in the shop that have got these arrows that have six, seven, even eight kills wow. on one arrow over the course of two or three years. So from a standpoint of being a few more dollars but being a much better investment, there's no question. Now what weight, knowing that I'm gonna shoot roughly um, 60 pounds around that, what would you recommend arrow okay. wise? Tim, what I'm gonna recommend for you at 27 inches at about 60 pounds shooting a uh, uh, 100 grain broadhead, it's probably gonna be a 400 spine arrow. Broadheads. Broadheads. Tim, if I get preachy about anything in the <laughs> store, it's gonna be about broadheads. Uh. I think it's great that you've got your Matthews bow. You will not be disappointed in that piece of equipment. They they make the great, just just excellent stuff. Shot them for years, love them. Um, but it doesn't matter what arrow you're shooting. It doesn't matter what sights you've got. It don't matter what kind of truck you drove. When when that arrow is in the air, there is only two things that make a difference, and it's again shot placement. How many times have I said that? But there is one other thing that matters, and that's your broadhead. You've got to match your broadhead to the poundage you're shooting. There are some great heads out there uh, that work very well, but, but frankly, sometimes people aren't shooting enough poundage to make them work correctly. Uh, for your situation where you're at speed-wise, poundage-wise, and the energy that you're creating, uh, I do not have a problem putting you in one of several heads. In times past, I've bucked on mechanical broadheads. But ain't nothing wrong with that Rage Broadhead. There's several broadheads out there, the Tekans, the Rages. Uh, there are several out there that do a very, very good job. That's 100 grains with two inches of cutting day. Yes, sir. I like the sound of that. As I'm looking up here on the shelf, the last thing we got to think about is the sight. I want a smaller dot. Okay. And I want to be able to light it up when I'm out there in that morning and evening situation. So what would you recommend? Okay. Probably the most popular one that I have is a 19 thousandths mm -hmm. pin. And then this for us blind guys, <laughs> uh, that's a two, uh, two nine pin. Top two nine, next two are 19s and the bottom two are 10s. That's what I've got on mine. We don't keep a lot of those in stock, but that's big for up close, gotcha. for that big gaudy pin up close. But then as you're shooting further, you've got... Sold. Let's right, go. Let's go. We're pretty much ready to go. Uh, we've got this roughed in. There's a few things we're going to change so we don't have absolutely the finished product. Your arrows are not quite dry yet, so we're going to use one of mine. Mm -hmm. I want to have you draw the bow back. Um, I'm going to adjust the peep. Can we, any compromise? Come, come down just a little okay. bit. That's, that's getting there. Okay. Yeah. Let her eat. Okay. We're good. Okay. Right there. All right. Use that top pin. Yes, sir. Whoa, things change when you back up. <laughs> the 
what this tells me is this tells me some of the story of what's going on. I have a shooter that is doing it the same each time. I'll have people shoot and they'll give me one here, one here, and they'll go, oh, one out of two ain't bad. <laughs> well, the problem is I don't know which of those two arrows are right. Exactly. Very good shooting. For those of you who just put your first sight on your bow, I shot low. What do I got to do to get it up there in the yellow? In order for me to go, I want to go to the arrow. So if I'm aiming at the bullseye and I'm hitting low, I would move my sight lower. I would chase the arrow, okay? So if I'm shooting to the left, I would do the same. I would move my sight follow the to arrow. the arrow. I would follow the arrow. Good okay. tip. Remember that. I couldn't walk down there and stick it in the target any better. I don't want a 10 yard pin. I want a 20 yard pin. Mm -hmm. I, want, I want it to be just a little high 10 dead on at 20. Thank you very much. Those are the last two shots are in the yellow. And like he said, he wants me just a little bit high at 10 because that 10 to 20, it's all good. Yep. Same pin. Yes, all sir. Right. I'm happy with that, Scott. Good. As far as I'm concerned, you have qualified at 10 yards. Go tonight. And if you see the biggest deer in the state of Kentucky at 38 yards, go, thank you, Lord, for letting me see such an awesome animal. I will kill you this weekend. When you get to where you need to be. Yeah. <laughs> I will kill you then. All right. But, but, but don't let me be misunderstood there because practice, familiarity, the reason they made you do the same stupid things over and over and over again in the Marines is you didn't have to think about it when you got in that pressure situation. Exactly right. And familiarity here, uh, your mic falls off, something like that. You gotta deal with something else. You don't have to sweat this stuff, it's automatic. Dude, I wanna shake your hand and thank you very much. I can't wait to get in the woods. Go kill something. I'm, I ain't scared of you. <laughs> <laughs>